Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thanks for watching. In this video, I want to show you how to script like a boss in Flow Designer. If you've seen some of my previous videos, I'm a fan of Flow Designer. I think it has the potential to democratize workflows for the whole organization. So you don't need to be a ServiceNow admin to come in and do that. And in the spirit of that, I was working on something and I needed to do some scripting. And if you've used Flow Designer, you know that you can come in and you can do things like uh, go into scripting mode, right? So you can fill out some of these fields, but you'll see there on the edges there, I can pick uh, fields from using this little picker, right? So I can go grab, you know, something about the trigger, um, the requested item, and I can kind of dot walk my way there. Or I can um, do a drag and drop kind of thing from over on the right hand side. So I can go look up that requested item record. I can go to one of the values on there and I can drag that that thing, that data pill over onto my canvas for Flow Designer. Okay, so that's one way of doing things. The second way is to actually just go in and script, right? So I can say, hey, for the email address, I want to actually just write a script to do what I want to do. And that works fine and well and everything, but it doesn't allow the kind of repeatability and reuse of things within ServiceNow, which is, I think, the key feature in Flow Designer. It's like, hey, let's not just do something um, unique, let's do something and let's make sure we can repeat and reuse it in different kinds of workflows. So, um, so scripting is nice, but uh, I would encourage you to think carefully about that. So let's use this example. I've got here, I'm gonna send an email. Um, so if in that email, maybe I have my use case, which I had earlier this week, uh, was to send the current date and time. I was running a job or running a workflow. And basically in the email notification, I wanted to say when the job started and when it completed. Now you do in workflow, um, in a workflow, have the run start time up here on the uh, upper right. But I was doing some things before, uh, while after the workflow had already started. So the actual stuff that I wanted to document the date and time could happen hours or even days, depending on an approval, after this workflow started. So the run start date time wasn't accurate for me. I needed the current date time right before I started doing some stuff within my workflow. So I could have come in here and said, hey, let me just script my email message. And in my email message, I could have had a variable for um, a new glide date time and put that on my email address or email in the body of the email. So I would have had to build the content of the email within this script. I can't just get the date time and then go use that in my email, right? So um, what I did instead is I created an action in, in uh, Flow Designer. So here I'm looking at a flow um, for this particular one that I want to show you. I created one to say, hey, get the date and time. Once I've got the date and time, if you look over here, I'll have that available as a data pill to use in my email. So what does that look like? Well, I just made a simple action. You can see here on the action it has no inputs. It has a scripting step where it basically says, set the output variable of current date time or cur underscore date underscore time to new glide date time. Okay, that's my scripting. And I basically said, hey, pass that back as a basic date time to whatever flow is calling that. And so we have that output, we sign the output here so that when someone runs this, they will have access to the current date time when that action was run. And then we can just drag and drop that data pill as you see here into our email and start using it. Okay, so that's like the primary small use case. If you're gonna go write a script, consider the fact that it might need to be reused or you may need it several times. And if you can make an action out of that, then everybody else can use that and they don't have to know scripting. They just know that, hey, one of the things that's available to me when I come in here and say I wanna add a new action is gonna be get date time. So it's now gonna be an action that's published for everybody to use. So you in the same spirit of Flow Designer and Integration Hub have created something that people can reuse and uh, use over and over without having to have the knowledge of scripting. So gone are the excuses of I can't do that in Flow Designer. Yes, you can do it in Flow Designer, but do it so that not only are you gonna get value from it, other people are going to get value from that as well. So let's take this one step further before we wrap the video. There are hundreds, I think there's actually thousands of script includes within ServiceNow. So things that you can do from a scripting perspective. So I have this one example. This is a script that's included, I think it's with a goal framework, but basically it says uh, get the list of strategic objectives uh, based on the business unit ID, right? So we see there's some scripting going on here. 
it's already pre-built, it's read-only, I can't really do anything with it. But this isn't something I can use in Flow Designer. I can't go past the business unit ID currently um, and then have it go look at the two different types of strategic objectives. There's one based on the business unit, so business unit strategy, and there's another one based on enterprise strategy. Both of these extend the strategic objectives table, so they're extensions of it and have their own values. But we can look up the business unit ID for the business unit strategies, and then by default, if it's an enterprise strategy, that's also a strategic objective for the business units, right? So what I did in Flow Designer, in the same way that I did a date time, I did a get strategic objectives action. And this one has a simple input, and that's the business unit ID, right? So we've gotta pass that value because we know that script uses that business unit ID. On the scripting step, we're just calling that same thing, get strategic objectives, and we're passing the business unit ID to that function, right? So it's gonna run this script over here, but we're gonna do it from Flow Designer using this little script over here. And on the output, it's gonna assign the list of strategic objectives that come from that. And we just do our output assignment here as well for that to come through. So what does that look like over here? First, in our flow, we're gonna look up the business unit ID so we can pass that sys ID to that action, which will pass it to that function that's in that script include. So there's our lookup for the business unit ID, and then we're gonna get the strategic objective. So this is calling the action that I just showed you. We pass the sys ID for that particular um, business unit where we looked up IT, and then I'm gonna get passed back a list of uh, strings or a list of uh, sys IDs because it, or an array of them actually, that script built out a list of them. And then for each one, now I can go look up the actual records in the strategic lit or strategic objectives table. What that's gonna give to me is a list of all of those things for me to use somewhere in my flow. So I'm gonna have a list of strategic objectives and I can go do, I can put them in an email, I can go update the records, I can go do something else with it, right? So this is, uh, I've used the script and now I have the, all that information, that data, ready for me to use inside of my flow. So let's test this out. I've got a test button up here. I'm actually not gonna save or activate. This was just for demo purposes to show you how you can script within Flow Designer, but make those scripts reusable. So let's just select any random uh, requested item and we'll run the test and that will execute everything you just saw um, in the canvas behind me for this particular flow. And what I'm doing this for is because I want to click on the test result or the execution details and show you what happened. Number one, my get date time. It got the current date time and made that available for us to use in this particular uh, flow. The send an email now has that get date, that date time as part of the email. So we see here, I can look at the actual contents. There was what was in my script and there is the date time that came back from that action that we created. Now, what about that business unit? So we looked up a record and we said where the name is IT. And yes, it found the business unit where that name is IT. And then it passed it to that get strategic objectives. So that went and ran that script. So this long script that we were looking at here, I didn't have to put any of this in my flow. I just called that method from my flow and it got me a list of sys IDs of all the strategic objectives and enterprise strategies for IT um, or for the company and pass those back. And then once I had that list of strings or list of sys IDs, then I looped through and got the actual records. So we can see here, we have the lookup record where it looks up the strategic objective for that particular sys ID. And it did that 23 times. It did it for each one of the strategic objectives that came back from that particular function. So that's it for this video. I wanted to really illustrate that you can still script and take advantage of the thousands or hundreds of scripts that are included in the system, but have those populated within your flows and reuse them. It's really important when we're talking about Flow Designer to have something that's repeatable, reusable. We go edit it one place and it affects everything and so our maintenance costs are low. And then like the point I was trying to make earlier is that you can make things, these things available to citizen developers or citizen workflow designers so they can come into Flow Designer and not have to know how to script, right? So we're making it accessible for everybody to use. Uh, in their workflows and take advantage of what the system has to offer and still allow for the scripting the capabilities that we come to know and love from ServiceNow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.